Hello DDP students and in this video tutorial we are going to talk about how to customize uh, some of your motion projects where you're going to be asked to bring in characters and um, just things to make it unique to you and your vision. Um, so I'm going to show you how to bring in whatever you want and um, the very first thing and actually before we get started um, there's going to be a number of projects, uh, just two more after this, that are also going to be bringing in characters. So one of them um, would be an intergalactic sort of fight scene where, you know, oh, sorry, that was the wrong one. Let me do, um, let me do the animate uh, joint relationships. So there's going to be like a diorama kind of fight scene there's going to be um, a mini golf thing that you're going to be making, a mini golf course. So that's also going to have some moving part, like a um, sliding wall. Okay. So um, I'm obviously going to be using um, Lisa Simpson for my demo today. So let's go back to the automata right here. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to figure out how tall our character or whatever we want to bring in is going to be, right? So I want us to imagine, I'm going to click off some of these visuals here. So we can just take a look at it. Um, let me see, Simpsons, get rid of that. And let's get rid of water. So all we're left with here our follower guides here. So we know that we're gonna be placing something on the follower guides that might be take up the um, top portion. It might go all the way down to the guide. It might be really big, it might be really small. This is all based on what you wanna do, right? So there's no specific size or height. It's really just based off your vision. So um, what I would do first is I would take whatever view I'm gonna be working from. In this case, it's going to be the front view because we want to attach something to the follower so we can look at it um, facing forward. So we're going to create a sketch. And this is merely, and we'll just uh, choose the front plane here to position. And um, this is merely just to get an idea of what we want. So we'll go to the rectangle tool and um, okay, and you know what is a better idea is using a center point rectangle. Okay, starting off right here. So it's a little more symmetrical on the sides. So let's just say we want the height to be four. All right, and that's looking really good to me. It may not. If it doesn't, of course, you can play with the dimensions here and maybe we want it to be four by four, right? And something more of a square. It doesn't really matter what the width is. It's really the height we're concerned with. So let's just say that the height is four and we're just gonna move forward. So we don't need to um, finish the sketch or do anything more. We've decided what our height is and our height is four. So let's go to a new design here and we're going to go to insert but before we do that we want to go to google images and you want to look up whatever character it is that you want and you want to find a character where there's just space around the character and nothing else so you have a lot of options here you have full scenes you don't want something like this um, you don't want something with that's cut off you don't want something that has a watermark on it. All right, so you just want the full body or whichever, whatever it is that you want, um, and then just the space around it with nothing else. Okay, so I have my image already picked out. So I'm gonna close this and I'm gonna go to insert. I'm gonna go to canvas. I'm going to find my image. All right, choose the front face. And here, uh, we're gonna size it. So I'm gonna grab this middle thing that is gonna make it larger. And now the field is gonna populate with that height right here. So I'm gonna press four, because that's what I decided. 
and I'm going to create a sketch on it. Okay, let's do the front face like that. And we're gonna be working with our fit point spline. And we're gonna be making a loose, and it has to be within this red box, but we're gonna be making a loose sort of selection around it. So let's just get started. We will be able to um, go back and fix it. What I find is that every time, the way that this works is every time that you click it, the line either goes convex or concave. So if it's going convex and you want it to go concave, you want to click it again. So it goes in a different direction. And the more you click it, you shouldn't do this excessively, but the more it'll give you points to, you see those points that are there, that'll allow you to manipulate the lines. And the more points that you have, the more anchors you have to manipulate it in the way that you want. But we're just gonna take it, um, I'm just gonna do a general outline, nothing crazy. I want this line to go a little straighter. I'm gonna click it again. When it goes really wide like that, I click it and it kind of just sets it on a closer path and it reigns in that line. So I want this to be a little more concave. It's a little too close there, but after the fact, once we make our selection, we're gonna go back and we're going to manipulate the line so it looks a little better. I'll show you how to work those points. But right now it's kind of sloppy and that's okay. Cool, so I close my selection. All right, and you can tell because it's, there's a million anchors here, but we're gonna press okay. We're gonna click off of it and you see all these black points that are left. We're gonna go and we're just gonna sort of, oops, you don't want that either. We're gonna grab these points and this is how you manipulate the line. You don't wanna grab the line itself because it'll move the entire line. So you only wanna handle this by the black points. And if you move it up, you can sort of, you can see how you can maneuver things or you can even bring it closer and slide things, the way that you slide them manipulates it so you can have a tighter selection that's a little more form fitting to what you're trying to get around here. So maybe we want this to be more like that. And we want space, but there's no real reason for there to be a ton of space around it. So I'm just gonna tighten up some of this here. So it doesn't look blobby when we're done. All right, and that's fine. Let me just bring this in a little more. Okay, it's looking good. Okay, 
So, I mean, I think this is, I'm going to bring this in here, but I think this is, this is good enough for us to move forward with this. I think this is a little too close. All right. Okay, let's just move forward. All right, so we're gonna finish our sketch. We're going to hit our extrude. We're going to select the profile and we're gonna extrude this. Um, well, we could do 0.5, that's okay. When we uh, toggle off our canvas, we see that we have this shape left. So what we're gonna do next is we're going to insert a decal instead of a canvas and we're gonna click our Choose our file, select our face, and we're gonna just expand this till it kind of fits. It sometimes does this thing where it looks like it's uh, like watery curved glass or whatever. We'll just work with what we can. It's sometimes not a perfect solution. Um, let's just make sure here. It's looking a little waterlogged. Okay, we could set that. And that's about what we have. But let's see here. I think that um, I think that the more we extrude it, the more sort of watery it looks. So I'm going to try doing this again, but I'm going to extrude it 0.25 this time instead of 0.5. Let's toggle off the canvas and let's see if this makes a difference. Okay. And I have a feeling it will. It's going to look sharper. Awesome. I can tell already that this is what we want. So we have to keep it at a 0.25 extrusion for the depth. That looks awesome. Cool. I'm just gonna make it bigger. No, that's smaller. Okay. All right. Let's just let's just go with that. All right. That looks good. Okay. Cool. So we have our character, and we can use that now. Um, what we're gonna need and this is almost always certain, is we're gonna need either a hole at the bottom to insert onto, and the case of the automata, um, it would be on top of the follower, um, but it could be a pole coming from the feet as well. So you're gonna need either a hole or a pole coming from your foot, so you can assemble it to something else. So this is how we're gonna do that. So once this whole thing has been completed, we're gonna go to construct, offset plane, and we want to choose the plane that's going to be going um, down like this, that's facing down, that we can bring beneath the feet of our character. Okay, so that's maybe try two. Let's try 2.25. All right, that looks fine. All right, I'm going to hit OK. And I'm going to create a sketch on the face of that. Okay, now we're working from here. So what we wanna do is we wanna tilt this so we can see what we're doing. So we know that we want maybe a hole here and a hole here or a pole here. So we're going to make a circle. So you should already know what the size of your um, follower is. Let's just say it's uh, 0.1875 or something like that. And then 
can make a copy of that. So um, let's take a look at this like that. All right, it's not quite centered when we look at it straight from the bottom view. So we're going to move these objects so they're just a little more centered. Okay. Okay, we can finish the sketch. And um, if you want a hole going through it, so the followers can go through, we're going to then extrude up. Okay, to whatever makes sense. And then we have our hole. So the follower would be jointed inside these holes here. And that's how you would get um, a decal or something onto, not a decal, but a character or whatever you want on your automata, um, on a sliding ball for your mini golf or for whatever you want. But let's just say you um, wanted to make a pull, okay? So let's take a look at this again. We're going to select our profiles. And um, what we can do, let's give this a shot, is try symmetric because there's space between here and here. So let's go in both ways. And this is set to cut, so let's join. All right, and then now you have these two poles here that can be a symbol to anything as well. So you're going to be doing this for however many characters or things that you want to add to your project. And that is how it's done.